Israel, land of the Bible, the Torah, and the Quran. It's also one of the most dangerous places on earth. Here, terrorism is more than just a threat. Every year, Israelis are killed by guerrillas, assassins, and suicide bombers. And this war-torn country has given birth to one of the deadliest hand-to-hand -hand combat systems in the world, Krav Maga. We're here to learn the secrets of this devastating fighting style. Then put our knowledge to the test in a brutal confrontation at a commando base so secret that no Americans have ever filmed there before. There are hundreds of distinct fighting styles in the world. They are practiced in every nation and by every people. Now, Jason Chambers, a mixed martial artist and professional fighter. And Bill Duff, a former pro football player and wrestler. Are embarked on a mission to explore the history and techniques of these incredible martial arts. And at the end of each journey, one of these two warriors will face the ultimate test. They'll try to survive a real fight with a true human weapon. Israel sits on the southern edge of the Mediterranean Sea. Surrounded by Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt, this strip of land has seen plenty of conflict in the last 3,000 years. From the pharaohs of ancient Egypt to the Crusaders, from the Roman Empire to the British Empire, virtually every major civilization has fought to control this territory. Today, each of its seven million citizens must serve for at least two years in the Israeli army. And they all learn Krav Maga. Literally meaning close combat, Krav Maga is a general term that encompasses many Israeli fighting styles. The term includes everything from basic self-defense moves to advanced special forces techniques. Krav Maga relies on moves from many different martial arts. It combines strikes and blocks from Muay Thai and Karate throws from judo, and disarms and grappling from jiu-jitsu. In Krav Maga, there is no ring, no points, and no rules. Victory isn't about a title or a belt or money. It's about survival. First created to fight the Nazis in Europe, today, Israelis use Krav Maga to defend themselves against their enemies. We're here in the old city of Jerusalem, to learn more about Krav Maga. Here, some of the holiest shrines of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are packed into an area that's just 1% the size of Manhattan. It's a city fraught with violence, which is why we're joined by Itai Gil. A former commando in the Israeli army's anti-terrorism unit, Gil has used Krav Maga for real on the battlefield. This is such close quarters. I mean, you don't really have a lot of room to, to maneuver or go no grab. No room. Anything. You, you know, know what? Let's like say that. even something worse. You can't even kick. I mean, it's so close. You can't low kick. You can't nothing. You can probably headbutt elbows and knees, maybe, and fingers to the eyes. Most of the fancy techniques we think we know are useless. Out of all the systems you'll probably run into in the world, maybe 1% you can use it. The rest is just a waste of energy. To start our foundation in Krav Maga, he takes us to his training center hidden beneath a soccer stadium. From the very first moment, it's clear that this is unlike anything we've ever seen before. This isn't a ring fight. It's a battle for survival against multiple armed opponents. These Krav Maga experts are trained to defend against knife and gun attacks and to strike back with moves designed to do the most possible damage. These guys are going full force because if you don't on the street, you're a dead man. Here, you get stabbed in the heart, you die. That's it. It's over. It's coming straight in, one, two things, getting in and getting out. It's nothing that you're going to see in the movies because this works. It was time for me to test my 10 years of professional fighting against Krav Maga. We were going to have a knife fight, but I won't have a knife. Between you, one meter away distance, and let's roll. 
Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, come here, you guys. He was here, he was in your back, he was in your neck, he was all over you. And if it would have punctured you all the way, and he did, you would be bleeding now and dead. A puncture wound from a knife is actually more serious than a slash wound. A human being can lose four pints of blood in just 60 seconds from a single knife puncture. With a real blade, it would have taken just one of the 11 stabs I received here to kill me. You're a real good ring fighter, but you have no skill whatsoever in self-defense, okay? So. Then it was my turn. You, you tough boy? I'm dead, I'm dead. All through my career as a football player and wrestler, I relied on my size and weight advantage, and I thought I could do the same here. Big mistake. Ite gave us one more shot at the drill, this time with pads, so we could go full force. You probably know these holds from different martial arts. Use them. One thing we won't need to worry about is learning the rules of Krav Maga combat. There aren't any. It's literally no holds barred. As we've seen, your opponent could be armed, and if you're not, you'd better find something to use. He's still coming at me, front kick. Take out a gun. You have an object, hit him. If you have a pin, stab him in the face. Everything we'd ever been taught counted for nothing here. It was clear we were going to need a whole new mindset if we were going to stand a chance against these guys. Okay, hold it! Okay, take off the gear, breathe, relax. We'll start teaching you guys because you don't know shit. If it was a real blade, you got stabbed so many times. How not to die, lesson one. Don't get stabbed. Still reeling from our beatings, Ite issued us a challenge. Study Krav Maga techniques, and then put them to a test against top commandos from the Israel Defense Forces Anti-Terrorist Squad at their top secret training camp. The Anti-Terror Training Facility is so secret, we're not allowed to know its name, its exact location, or any information about its personnel. You will go into the base, and uh, you will be challenged by certain attacks. We believe that if you can survive anything at close range, that's already a victory for us, okay? When we do face our final challenge, it will be one of us in a full contact face-off against armed opponents using Krav Maga to stay alive. So that's a challenge and a half. Not only do we have to train with special forces, but at the end, we have to fight them too. Our training began right then and there. Itai started us off with a Krav Maga fundamental that's different than anything we'd ever used before. It's called bursting. We're going to do a very simple mechanical technique. I'm not just going to block, come at me. I'm not going to stay 90 degrees. I'm going to divert it. At the same time, when he's doing that, real time, this is the bursting I'm talking about. I will create enough damage for a few milliseconds to disconnect, identify as quick as possible. The only thing that is going to save you from that knife is defending and attacking simultaneously. Bursting works by combining two separate arm movements, a blocking action and a strike. The block is similar to that used in karate and redirects the force of the knife away from the body by punching forward at the soft tissue of the attacking arm. Even if it did slip and it went down and it cut you or in the shoulder, it's okay, as long as it doesn't go into the body. Unlike karate, this move is combined with a simultaneous strike. As one arm blocks, the other jabs at the opponent's weakest area. It's meant to be here. Right. And it's meant to be here. It can be open hand to the face, it can be open to the nose, it can be to the eye, anything you wish. Because you don't have time to cock your arm in a surprise attack, bursting's effectiveness doesn't come from the rotational power of the torso. Instead, it's driven by the legs, which hurl you forward into your opponent. Both the block and the strike land with 300 pounds of force, more than enough to collapse the windpipe or fracture the delicate bones of the face. Force, force. That's it. This bursting technique is really unique to Krav Maga. You block and strike at the same time. I've never seen that in any other martial art. That's it. Even though we're both experienced fighters, this challenge looks like it's going to be our toughest yet. To prepare, we're headed to one of the deadliest places in this violent country. 
There, we'll learn the ultimate self-defense techniques from Krav Maga professionals. Men who are paid to protect some of the world's richest and most famous people. Netanya on the Mediterranean coast isn't widely known outside Israel, but it's famous in personal protection circles. It's home to the headquarters of the International Krav Maga Federation. The Federation has trained some of the world's top bodyguards. The man who trains them is Eyal Yenilov, chief instructor of the Federation. And Eyal's training never loses focus on the life and death consequences of Krav Maga. Krav Maga is an integrated system, which is to prepare a person to deal with real, real type of conflicts. Eyal starts our training, hard. This one here. They're attacking targets. Oh, they're attacking multiple yes, targets? multiple targets, multiple opponents. From my years of fighting, I'm used to strict rules. You fight one guy in a confined space with a ref. Now, Eyal sticks me at the bottom of a Krav Maga dog pile. And all I have to do is fight my way out, any way I can. It's not a good feeling being surrounded by 12 guys. This exercise isn't designed to teach us a specific technique. Instead, it's to teach us how aggression and effort are a big part of self-defense. Krav Maga is all about using anything you can to get out of a dangerous situation. And I can't see anything more dangerous than being surrounded by these guys. All right. <laughs> It's really like a bar fight. I mean, punches, kicks, chokes, anything. You gotta get the guys off you and quick. Use anything you got. Poke them in the eyes, hit them in the balls, elbow to the head. You wanna live, they wanna kill you. Then Eyal ups the stakes. If you're going to be a bodyguard, you can't just watch out for yourself. So now I have to go into the dog pile with a client and bring him out safe. It's like being a human pinball. Going through 15 people is one thing, but this simulates possibly going through hundreds, if not thousands. But training in the gym isn't enough. Krav is a real world fighting art. So Eyal takes us outside to teach us a move to help counter any kind of attack. It's called the 360 defense. The most common attack, especially with the hand, is a circular attack. As we'd just seen, an assault could come at us from any direction. This move would work against them all. The technique is this choppy motion. Open hand is a little bit better because you've got another space and it's faster. And to stop the attack at the waist. Why at the, at the wrist? Why the wrist? Because of the knife. You should be able to use the technique in all variations, in all angles, in all directions. That's it. The 360 defense conditions a fighter's perception reaction time, the time it takes to identify a threat and react against it. The average human being's time is 1.5 seconds. 360 defense training strengthens the actional connection in the brain, trimming a fighter's response time to nearly a tenth of a second. That's faster than a mouse click on your computer. Doing the 360 defense requires you keep your body in motion at all times, using your arms to defend different angles of attack. The key is keeping your arms at an oblique angle with your hands open and straight so that you don't take any blows straight on. Each is deflected down the angle of your forearm, which reduces its impact. So this is something that you'd use no matter what angle you're at. It doesn't matter if the person is straight onto you, to the side of you, to the back. You can use these techniques set, set. from anywhere. What we're quickly discovering is that Krav Maga isn't defined by one type of technique. Instead, it's built from the pieces of other martial arts and then modified for self-defense in combat situations. The basics of the 360 technique we just learned are incredibly similar to the Shurite Karate we studied in Okinawa, but modified to function against multiple opponents. But our training wasn't over yet. Eyal led us to a nearby beach to work on our next self-defense technique, a move we can use to defend against one of the most dangerous attacks, a choke. 
it's, uh, somebody's at your throat, and it's a matter of sometimes seconds until you lose conscience. And if you lose conscience, you know, you can do whatever. It's hard to defend yourself. Definitely. If someone's got their hands around your throat, they can do a lot of damage. No problem. Now, uh, let you, I'll let you feel a little bit. If you say, ah, uh, ah, OK. Yeah, I feel that. Thank exactly. You. This soft tissue of the throat is one of the most vulnerable areas of your whole body. Just 76 pounds of compressive force to the throat is enough to cause total collapse of the larynx. That's less force than it takes to crumple a beer can. If you're choking me, natural, uh, this is natural behavior. Unfortunately, it is not strong enough. The trick to executing the choke defense is to not pull down, which is your first instinct. So these five fingers are going to come as close as possible to my neck, leaning on my shoulders. Instead, you pull your opponent's hands to the side, breaking the choke. My elbows are going backwards strongly, contraction of the neck muscles, chin a little bit down, stomp a little bit in the place and giving a first strike, which is usually a knee to groin. During the choke, your opponent is relying on his grip strength and outstretched arms to maintain the choke. The strength of your back and shoulder muscles is greater than the applied force of your opponent's hold, so it doesn't take much to break his grip. And the closer your hands are to your own neck, the greater the leverage. Nice. Good. Bill's a big, strong guy, and I don't want to have to fight force with force. Bill's going to choke me. I need to use technique to open his hands and just make those hands that he's putting all the pressure on move to the outside. This move is great. I really think it'll work for me with my size. I can get him off me right away, get under, throw a couple strikes, and then see who's around me who I can take on. The techniques we've learned today have opened our eyes to the intensity of Krav Maga and the merciless environment it's designed for. On the next part of our quest, we're going to learn how Krav Maga makes use of one of the deadliest tools in the Israeli arsenal. The weapon, the M16 assault rifle. Our destination, a place called Armageddon. We traveled 25 miles to the forested hills outside the ancient town of Megiddo. This is the Valley of Armageddon, where the Bible says mankind's last great battle on Earth will take place. We've come here to learn a Krav Maga technique that will help us take on the elite commandos we'll be facing. Our instructor is Moni Isaac, a top special forces trainer. Gun disarming and weapon disarming become a big issue. This is what I'm going to teach you today. A gun disarm is a move that is especially relevant here in Israel. Today, there are 200 million people here in the Middle East and 100 million guns. That means there's a very good chance that anyone you see could be packing heat. But the move we're going to learn will allow us to take our opponent's gun and use it against him. It's called the pistol disarm. Of course, the first rule is that if you're ever confronted with a gun on the street, you shouldn't fight. It's not worth dying over your wallet, but in combat, things are different. And when I pull here, I can continue on taking the gun. As I turn, it's wrist turn. The most important step of the pistol disarm is to get yourself out of the line of fire. But rather than step to the side, you simply twist your hips, removing your core from the line of fire. Then you pull the attacker forward, off-balancing him while holding his wrist against your torso. Once you've got control of the gun, you just grab the barrel and twist, prying the gun from his hand. I want to be like a magician. I want to be able to move the gun from your hand to my hand, create distance, and at that stage, I have the power. The disarm is basically a judo wrist lock and uses many of the same principles. By pulling your attacker forward as you turn, he loses his balance, giving you control of his wrist. The barrel of the gun then becomes a lever, allowing you to take the gun. Because you are using the muscles of your torso, which can deliver up to 10 times more force than the muscles of the wrist, the disarm works against an opponent who is much stronger than you. Reach for the sky. Give me your shoes, punk. I gotta watch it. Beautiful, you did good. Give me your car keys. I'm sorry, I didn't. Lovely. Oh, lovely. That was great. Heard him a little bit more. 
It hurts, no way hurts gonna... your finger that you got to end the trigger. It can hurt. If you try to resist, it's going to hurt the wrist as well because it's nothing to do with strength. It's really a very simple biomechanic move. But the pistol disarm isn't just about force. It's also about mind. Moni teaches us a psychological trick. Never look in your opponent's eyes. An experienced attacker will see your pupils give an involuntary reflex one hundredth of a second before you make your move. That may not sound like much, but when you think that a bullet can travel 4,000 feet in a second, you need every edge you can get. Let's go, let's get in the I'm car. I'm sorry, I didn't Here we go. Nice. We will do the same move. From here, I can do the same move. I like this. This and is nice because it's simple and it's to the point. You don't have to think of, oh, let's see, the gun's kind of here. Now, I know a technique for here and I know a technique for here, but if it's here, what it's technique do I want to use? It's the same move. It's exactly right. Because as long as I'm here, here we go, man. Ch -ch and do it quick without even really thinking about it because it's simple. But Krav Maga isn't just about taking guns away. It's also about learning how to use your gun as a weapon, even without bullets. Which is why we're heading to Wingate near Tel Aviv. It's the main base of the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces. Here, every Israeli citizen comes for basic training. And a key part of that training is Krav Maga. The basic techniques of Krav Maga were created by boxer and wrestler Emi Lichtenfeld in the 1930s. Lichtenfeld grew up in Czechoslovakia and watched as gangs of Nazis beat up and harassed Jews. He realized that boxing and wrestling weren't enough to defend against a gang of thugs on the street. So he began creating a new form of self-defense that drew from the most effective techniques of all the martial arts, from boxing to judo. In 1940, as the Nazis prepared to invade, Lichtenfeld fled to what was then called Palestine. He began working and training with Jewish settlers who had formed a militia called the Palmach. When the State of Israel was created in 1948, the Palmach became the core of the new army called the Israel Defense Forces. And Krav Maga became the core of its hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Today, the basic techniques are taught to every new recruit in the IDF. And now it's our turn. At the base, we met up with Shahar Klafeld, the chief instructor. We want you, in the end of the day, to be very good at reaction against anything. If it's an iron bar, if it's an ax, if it's a knife. And we want you to do that in every condition of your body. So let's put a gear on and uh, let's do that. Over the years, Krav Maga has evolved. In the civilian world, it's mostly used as self-defense. In the military world, though, it's become something more, a true battlefield art. Well, I got my uniform, I got my gun. I'm supposed to be learning Krav Maga. I don't know, it looks like I'm joining the IDF. We teach you how to operate your weapon, right? All training here revolves around one weapon, the M16 semi-automatic assault rifle. 40 inches of aluminum alloy. The M16 was first used in Vietnam and is still used today by US forces in Iraq. There are currently more than 8 million M16s in service in the world. Many of them here in Israel, where they are the official assault weapon of the IDF. But having a gun in your hand doesn't always mean you can shoot your opponent. The weapon could jam, or you could be out of ammo. Imagine yourself losing all your ammo in a war and then being face to face with an enemy. And then you have to make the decision. Do I stay and fight? Do I call for other people? Or do I just hit him with my weapon. Shahar teaches us how to use the M16 as a brutal hand-to-hand -hand tool. The key is not to swing it like a club, but to use the weapon as an extension of your arms. Get in close and use the twisting power of your torso to drive the butt of the weapon into the exposed face of an attacker. It's essentially an elbow strike from another martial art, Muay Thai. But because the metal doesn't deform on impact, like human bone, Every ounce of power is channeled directly into your opponent's face. With the twisting motion of the torso generating the force and the stiff metal of the M16 providing the impact, it's enough to shatter a cheekbone or break a jaw. One, two, very good. Piss over the target right. and get back. 
One, two, again. Inside, okay? Try that. Very good, Jason, very good. I'm really starting to get a feel of this Krav Maga weapons technique. It's all about fast, quick motions to the enemy's face. You want to take them out as quickly as possible. I did a defense like this. Then I take it on the side, this. Defense. Ah! Drop him. Yeah. I feel like a killer now. And you need to feel that aggression. In any combat situation, you've got to be as pumped up as your enemy. To help us prepare mentally as well as physically for our ultimate challenge, Shahar has set up an exercise that will test us to our limits. A run in full combat gear through buildings that conceal five officers waiting to attack us. This is pure urban terrorism survival training. Is this helmet and this gear? It's all different in the ball game. Let's go, Bill. Something happens, you have to run. Go, go, go. The key to this mission is pure aggression. You don't stop, you don't slow down. When you come to an obstacle or an enemy, you just power right through him and kill him if possible. Go, 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 Bill, go! Go, 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 Bill! Stack, cut him! Go, 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 Bill, go! Bill, go, go, go! Stop. Okay. You okay, Bill? Good. Did well. Thank you. Very good. Little bit of scent of uh, fear inside, no? Fear is good. Yeah, fear is good. You're right. Fear is a great component in this test. Use your war cry. Ah! You get after him. Butt him in the face. Hit him in the shoulder. Any way you can to win. And then you shoot him dead and keep going. It's a war zone, baby. Then it was my turn. Just let your instincts uh, rule you. OK, matkilim, ikon kulam. Yatsim la derech. Jason, something happens there. Go. You have to run now. This is about as different from my MMA background as I could get. Go, 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 Jason! It's not about feeling out the other guy or planning a strategy. It's about guts and instinct. About reaction time and commitment. And violence. Go, go, go! Shoot him! And it is true. Your natural reactions will take over. If you just let it and trust in the training, man, I'm really winded. That was just like a block. And this is nothing compared to what we could be facing at the top secret commando base where we'll meet our final challenge. To prepare, we're heading deep into the burning sands of the Judean desert to the ancient fortress of Masada. There, we'll train with a Krav Maga guru a man who'll teach us the ultimate skills we'll need to survive. Our exploration of the Israeli martial art of Krav Maga has brought us 150 miles from Tel Aviv to the ancient fortress city of Masada. Standing nearly 1,500 feet above the Dead Sea, this hilltop complex was home to one of the country's most legendary battles. We've come here to immerse ourselves in Krav Maga. Here, we're going to experience this Israeli martial art in its most extreme form, as a real-world killing art. The man who'll teach us is one of Israel's legendary fighters, Dennis Hanner. After his whole family was slaughtered by Nazis, Dennis dedicated his life to Krav Maga and to ensuring that Jews could protect themselves. Good, good, we're just having a bit of training here. Man, you guys yeah. picked a great spot to train in underneath the hot sun. This is some realistic combat. This is called survival. It's not in the gym. This is nature. Yeah. This is what this place is all about, Matsana. Originally built by the Romans, the fortress was invaded and occupied by a few hundred rebel Jewish fighters in 72 AD. To take it back, 
8,000 Roman soldiers besieged the fortress but couldn't defeat the occupiers. Outnumbered 10 to 1, the Jews fought for three months until finally the water ran out. The Jews refused to be captured alive, but because the Jewish religion forbids suicide, the defenders killed each other one by one until the last remaining fighter committed the sin and turned his sword on himself. For Dennis and his crew, Masada isn't ancient history. It's part of their everyday reality. Many of Dennis's students go on to join Israel's elite special forces units, where Krav Maga becomes just another tool in their deadly arsenal. If you're close to a person that's already finished, because I've already killed him, I can take him what I want. Look, I could kill him how I want. It's like pressure points, no eyes. Each of these strikes is aimed for a vital point. It could be gouging the eyes, or driving the bones of the nose back into the sinuses, or crushing the soft tissue of the throat. Every one of these shots could kill, and that's the idea. For Dennis, Krav Maga isn't about sport. It's life and death. Hey! The whole idea now is the circle. There's the circle. With the same knife, I can kill him. And it's that kind of focus that we need for our final challenge. This way. Why this way? I can take him to do, kill himself. Just so you know, this thing is so sharp, and to see it get wielded around, and they train with these. These aren't rubber knives, these aren't plastic knives. This thing is as sharp of a knife as it comes. The Judean desert has been barren for centuries. With just two inches of rain a year, there's not much that can survive out here. Which makes Dennis's desert camp a very tough place to train. Our training began with an exercise designed to prepare us for facing multiple attackers. Never stop moving. Change direction. Don't close, keep yourself close. Change direction. Keep your defense. Change direction. Faster, faster. You've got to be quick. But when you do see your opportunity, it's time to strike. Everything Dennis does is geared towards using your body as a weapon. This is the sword. Stay! I gotta knock you out one point. The killing techniques is what I say. I'll go straight to the throat. I'll go straight to the side, straight to the eye. These techniques aren't for use in MMA. They're designed for combat. All attacks are aimed at vulnerable targets. You can break his leg by this kick. If any of these blows land properly, your opponent won't just be down. He'll likely be dead. Right, now going in a circle. Three heights. Now move around. Move, punch, all sides. I'm faster. Now to the top of the head. Okay. To the side. Finally, after a tough day of training, the sun began to go down. With no clouds to hold the heat, the temperature plummeted to just a few degrees above freezing. As night fell, we gathered around a fire near the camp to stay warm. Well, I want to explain you fellas something. Krav Maga is a way of life. You're going to be prepared to fight, and we're going to learn the spirit to fight and never to give up. Tomorrow we're really going into action. We're going to fight one man, you're going to fight two men, you're going to fight three men. You're going to feel the punches. You're going to give punches. Looks like our training had just begun. Power punching and kicking, hey! Strong. Yes! Always circling. Quick! Always circling. Today, the fighting got even more intense. Faster, faster, faster! It doesn't matter if it's 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. When this sun is out, it's 100 degrees. It's intense. If this doesn't get us ready for our final challenge, nothing's going to. Hala, stop punching the body. Work, work. Kicking, punching, low necks. Hit, punch, go in the circle, go. With our bodies and minds conditioned to the punishment of the training, Dennis decided we were ready to face a final test. And of course, it wasn't going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And the stakes were even higher because one end of our training ground ended in a 300-foot cliff. One wrong move and we weren't just beat up, we were dead. All right, are you ready? Yes. Attempt start. Keep. 
This was the perfect workout. It kept us focused on the big picture. Not just the guy in front of us, but the whole battlefield. To take on multiple opponents, we'd need to be able to think beyond single techniques and integrate everything into a total combat package. You see, you kept on the circle, and I didn't get one punch. Good. Well, because his strength, he can come and catch you and hold you. But against a knife or against the fighting techniques of two or three, it's not good enough. Jason is small, but being small, you've got to be quick and you've got to be clever because you can't let a big customer catch you. So he's fast, he's quick, he's got good techniques. He's just got to learn the right techniques. I feel myself kind of notching up, notching up, notching up, and it's coming together. Our training was finally over, and now we were as ready as we'd ever be to face what lay ahead. Israel's anti-terror commandos are among the toughest in the world. Now, we would be the first foreigners ever to film inside this top secret base. And certainly the first to face off against some of the deadliest men in the world. Bill and I are as ready as we'll ever be. It's time to put our intensive Krav Maga training into practice against the deadliest fighters in the world the elite commandos of the Israel Defense Forces Counterterrorism Unit. It turns out we're the first foreign film crew ever allowed into the camp. Good, how are you? And as we arrive, the commanding officer lays down the ground rules. We're not allowed to show his face or mention his name. And that goes for everyone we meet inside the camp. In fact, this facility is so secret, we're not allowed to reveal its name or location and once we enter the base, filming is heavily restricted. We don't even know exactly what our challenge will be. All we do know is that it will push our Krav Maga skills to the limit. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. You've been edited. So this is what it's all come down to, being able to put my Krav Maga skills to the test. All the knife defense, stick defense, gun defense, empty hand grabs, it's all coming down to this. We entered during a sparring session. These elite commando recruits train in advanced Krav Maga techniques for four hours every day for six months. Not to mention all their specialized anti-terror training. Every single one of these guys will see real combat when they graduate. This is a training camp for killers. Wow, that's full go right there. Oh. Wow. Even after a direct kick in the groin, the cadet couldn't get permission to rest. So he got hit in the balls? He got hit in the balls, and he wanted to quit. His instructor immediately told him, you will not stop. Don't bitch. Go in there and keep on fighting. The tour was over. At last, we were going to learn just what our challenge would involve. It was our trainer, Itai Gill, who gave it to us. Because he's a former anti-terror commando, just like these guys, he knew exactly what we'd be facing. As you remembered, you went through different disciplines with different instructors. Everyone is an awesome instructor, okay? What we're gonna do today is you will be attacked, hardcore, full power, with a knife. Self-defense, chokes, holds, escapes, okay? Pointed blank with a gun. So you guys will have to survive those. Okay, are you ready, guys? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, okay, go, let's go. Okay, let's go. Sounds like a lot. Multiple opponents from multiple yeah. directions with multiple weapons. Yeah. We would be outnumbered in facing trained killers. Time for one last burst of intensive training before we decide which one of us will accept the challenge. I feel like I got the good punch down, you know, after the block. It's that checking your perimeter afterwards you keep forgetting about. Well, both of you did pretty good. Um, I don't want to make any decision to who's better, okay? That's between you guys. Nothing we'd encountered before in our fighting careers had prepared us for this. And it was tough deciding who would stand the better chance. But realistically, this is coming down to speed, timing, and agility. Would you agree? No, I think this comes down to how many people are coming after you, 
your ability to get rid of them fast. Okay, speed, timing, and technique. Agility. If there's one guy or six guys, you need to be able to do the techniques fast and, and deal with multiple people. And I would say that my footwork, just being a little more agile than you, would come into play here. Okay, brother. You got it. Okay, guys. Are you ready? Yes, we have a decision who's going to fight. We're ready and we have a decision. I'm bigger and stronger, but we decided it doesn't have anything to do with Krav Maga. And he's definitely gotten the techniques down a little bit better than me. So he's our guy for the challenge. OK. You ready? Yes. Ready. Let's go. Cool, man. Let's go. All right. With the fight just minutes away now, I needed to prepare my body and my mind for the ordeal. Even though I feel pretty comfortable with the techniques, Seeing if I can pull these off without getting killed is going to be a whole other story. Just moments before the fight began, we learned who the opponents would be. The guys we'd seen earlier were just recruits. Jason would be up against their instructors. Jason's not just fighting the IDF's best men. He's fighting all their best men. The IDF won't allow us to identify them, but we do know that they all have at least seven years of experience in Krav Maga, Muay Thai, or Karate. One has been a Kung Fu black belt for 10 years, and one is the head of Krav Maga instruction here at the base. These are guys who've used Krav Maga in the real world, and not just for self-defense. They are gonna bring a whole lot of hurt. As Jason prepares himself for combat, Itai outlines the rules of engagement. Things that are not permitted. Nothing for eye gouging, no holding fingers to break, no side kicks to knee joints, no shots full power to the cup. I would face a total of 14 attacks. If I was hit more than three times, the challenge would end. I had to defend myself and then take my opponents down. They're gonna come at you spontaneously. This fight would be the ultimate test of everything I'd learned. Krav Maga for self-defense and as a form of combat. I knew what my strategy was. Stay on my toes and keep watching my back, circling like we learned at Masada. But it's easier said than done. There are just too many opponents to watch them all at once. There you go, Jason. I block two knives in a row and take my enemies down. Safe. But then comes number three. Jason, watch the knife! I just didn't see him, and by the time I did, it was too late. I made it through four attacks, but he got in a hit. Another one I don't see, but this time, I turn the tables. There's no quarter time here. These things are coming so fast. Chokes, knives, guns. After six attacks, only one knife made contact. I'm still in it. Okay, hold it. You okay? You're all right. You okay? Bill, how about you continue? Yes. I mean, Jason is doing great, but they are coming one after the other. As my opponents kept coming at me, my confidence increased. I felt all the techniques I'd learned become instinctive. and then a direct stab to the back of the neck. Final score, 14 attacks and just two knife wounds. But I used the techniques we'd learned. Bursting, 360, gun defense, it all came into play. And it would keep me alive if I ever had to use it on the street. Well, he needs a good surgeon now. And you've been, you've been stabbed pretty bad, but listen, you got good instincts. You're a good athlete. Very good job. Thank Very you. Good job. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, guys. That's hard, man. The fight over, we left the top secret base. We've come to understand that Krav Maga is far more than a sport. Here in Israel, it's a true martial art, something for the battlefield, something inseparable from Israeli history itself.